Hey guys, it's Carly from All The Pretty Books, your place for all things Harry Potter. And today, what I thought we'd talk about is the beautiful new Bulgarian Harry Potter books. Bulgarian Harry Potter books have been around for about 20 years. <laughs> First available in this cover, illustrated by our wonderful Mary Grand Prey. And then in 2017, we have this Johnny Duddle cover. And last, but hopefully not least, we have the brand new 20th anniversary editions, which is what we're gonna talk about today. Book one. I really like this moment. It looks like Hogwarts Castle is in the background. Here's of course Harry, Hagrid of course, and nighttime, it's probably when they got to the castle for the very first time. I really like the cover, even though the art is very different. I don't even know the proper term to really call it because I'm not an art person. I just love to look at it. I like the juxtaposition of colors here. The title is looks like it's like a gold paint. Like, I don't know. It just really sets off all the colors here. It goes very well together. It's very well laid out, very smartly done. And then we have the side of the spine. And again, you have the same gold paint there. And the back, and we have a dragon, probably Norbert, because we know Norbert was in here. When we open it up, you have the wonderful paste downs here, and they're flying on brooms, like, and it carries over to the back side. It's just a wonderfully put together book. Sadly, there's not any internal illustrations. That's like the one thing that I wish it had was internal illustrations, kind of like the Italian does, or even the US first edition. on Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Whoa. I really hate this moment, you guys. I'm such an arachnophobic person. I can't even hardly touch the bottom of the cover. I hate Chamber of Secrets spider moments, and there's so many, and much like Ron. Why spiders? Why not follow the butterflies? Ugh. Anyway, and here we have the very same style of art as you've seen one, and it'll be the same style throughout the others. The gold, title up in here. What do you think of their Aragog? He kind of looks like he's missing some legs. He looks like he's only got four legs. Spiders are supposed to have eight, so he kind of looks like a giant beetle. I do like that the illustrator included a different moment than what we typically see on the Chamber of Secrets covers. Typically it'll be, you know, flying to the burrow, flying out of the Chamber of Secrets. So I think that this is kind of cool that the illustrator picked this moment because it's not a very common moment to pick. So I do like that. I just hate the spider part of it. And there's your bag with Dobby. What do you think of his Dobby? And again, paste downs don't disappoint. Again, I just wish that it had like internal throughout the book, like chapter illustrations even, that would be nice. Just to tie everything together because the outsides are so pretty, but it's probably a cost thing because illustrations internally is extra ink, right? Azkaban. We have Harry on Buckbeak. I love beaky moments. He's one of my favorite things about book three. And I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because Buckbeak kind of reminds me of an of it like a pet that people don't like too much, which is kind of really what he is. So maybe I feel sympathy for that because I know I've had some dogs that I always have to stick up for and it gets old. I love the colors. I love the light blues and the gold shines so well on here, I think. And we have Harry standing up on Buckbeak, kind of like, I'm the king of the world, which I think is kind of cool. It looks like probably Hogsmeade below, if I had to guess. Here's the backside with what may be Hedwig, but if it is Hedwig, it's not really a snowy owl, but it could be just some of the shading. I don't know, owl with letter, probably Hedwig. Let's, I've not looked inside yet, so I don't know what the paste downs look like. So let's see what they are. Ooh, that's nifty. That's interesting. Do you think that's Lupin as werewolf Lupin? Because if so, that doesn't look like a werewolf. It kind of looks like how I would imagine a troll. That's probably a werewolf. And backside. Da! Our spine. Oh, I just love this book. When I first saw these covers, I knew. Well, I was gonna have to get them anyway, because I'm me. But 
I knew I couldn't wait to have them because they're so beautiful. I don't know why. It's not even the kind of art that typically draws to me, but the colors used do, if that makes any sense. I love the kind of deep colors used, like the very rich color palette. I love the juxtaposition of the colors. I don't know, but I really was so excited about these when I very first saw them and they do not disappoint at all. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Oh, I love the green. What I think is really interesting here too is that the illustrator picked a very different moment again for the cover. The three tasks are a huge event. So I'm surprised that there's not like, you see a lot of task one on the cover. You see there's several different illustrators who have picked like Harry ch being chased by the dragon to get the dragon egg from task one. You see that, but you don't see much from task two. It's kind of overlooked. So I think it's kind of cool that the illustrator picked it, to be honest. He still has his cloak on or his robe on under the water, but you know, that's all right too. He's swimming around trying to get his Weasley. I actually just got, I'm rereading this series and I'm in this exact moment in the book. So it's kind of cool to see it illustrated here and to see it through a whole different person's eyes because it's very different than how I would have pictured it in mine. <sighs> I just love it. And he's got flippers because remember he took the gillyweed. But what's cool is that if you've not read this series yet, there's really not many spoilers because you're you're going to see this and wonder why he's got fins or where his feet are anyway. You're not going to know what's going on, but if you have read it, you're going to be like, aha, I know the moment. And the back. Inside. <laughs> I love it. It's task one. How cool. Order of the Phoenix. Again, here, the illustrator picked a less common moment for the cover. I love that he put Groppy on the cover. It's such an uh, interesting plot or part of book five. And you never, there, I don't know of any cover that features him other than this one. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know down below. But I can't think of a cover that features Grop on five at all. And he's in the forest being hidden by Hagrid. Very cool moment to put on the cover. And again, it doesn't give anything away. It's just interesting, like, hmm. I wonder what's gonna happen in this book. And I love the color palette used again. Black into the dark greens, reds, shadows. And then we have some Harry's pants are light for whatever reason, the centaur's light down here. Oh no, it's just cool colors used. I really do like it. Also on the spine, the gold here gets a little bit lost, but you know, that's okay. And then on the back we have Umbridge, who's got a really pink face. And she's actually, more attractive than I would have thought this particular artist would have made her. I personally would have thought that the illustrator would have done something more similar to the Finnish illustrator who definitely followed JK Rowling's description in the book of a very toad-like woman. Isn't that awesome? I love this book five cover. There we are. looks like we're all on Thestrals. So that's kind of cool. Backside will just be really, whoa, <laughs> they put it upside down. I thought I'd opened it wrong, but they didn't. It's a misprint. Well, that's cool. Half-blood prints. Most half-blood prints tend to have like a very similar idea on the cover. For an illustrator who has picked very unique moments for some of the covers of his books, I'm actually shocked that he picked one that is on many different books. I'm a little disappointed here. This isn't my favorite moment from the book anyway, although it is a big one. There's other ones that I think would have been better here. What? Well, actually, good question. What do you think would be a great moment to put on the cover of six? you can answer down below because I would like to hear your comments because I get, I don't know, I don't like to see this part. It's such a bad part in the book. It's such a hard part for me to read through that I hate that it's forever like memorialized on a cover. Look at how creepy that it, the Fury are. Poor Dumbledore. I just hate, I don't hate book six. It's just not a, it's not a fun read. We've got the end of some of my favorite establishments, some of like the happy times that were just on. There's Harry on the back and inside. Woo! 
Ooh, we have Snape. What do you think about that? Moment aside, I do love the colors used. I love the deep purple with the bright yellow and the gold and the black, the deep red and the blue, the green. It really, they offset very well. So it's a stunning color-wise cover for me. I just wish they would have picked a different moment. And book seven. Um, this is not my favorite cover of this series. I think my favorite color cover is probably three or four. One is up there too. But this one, it's very dark and black, but there's a lot of th hard things going on here. So I'm not surprised by all the dark and black on the cover. And some of the grays, Harry's pants are still light blue. That seems to be a trend throughout the whole series for whatever reason, or the whole cover series. We have Lord Voldemort. Actually, the illustrator has given him quite a pronounced nose, which is odd because we know Voldy's pretty snake-like and pretty noseless. So I find it odd that his a huge beak of a nose. So that's a little bit odd. And of course, they're dueling at the end. This is a, this is a pretty common cover to see. Here's the Grand Prey cover. And you see here too, like we unfold the whole thing. So again, we have Voldemort and Harry duking it out at the end. Real quick, what I think is interesting, and then I'll go back to the Bulgarian. What I think is interesting is the front of the cover here actually reminds me of like the Colosseum when I was in the Colosseum in Rome, Italy. Like that to me, like it looks like Harry's in a death fight, which is what they did in the Colosseum. So I guess that fits, maybe that's intentional. I don't know. I just know that when I first saw the book cover, I was like, why is Harry in the Colosseum in Rome? Moving on back to Bulgaria. Very similar moment, but illustrated very differently. And it doesn't look like Harry's in the Colosseum at all. Looks like it's very dark and gray and maybe like in a cave or a very dark room. And then on the back, we have Ron and Hermione like, yay, we're done, we're done, we lived. Ooh, that's an interesting choice. Voldy with the Death Eaters, very unusual. Which one of the Bulgarian covers was your favorite? Philosopher's Stone. Chamber of Secrets with that nasty Aragog thing on it. Prisoner of Azkaban. Goblet of Fire. Order of the Phoenix. Half-Blood Prince. Deathly Hallows. Love to hear which is your favorite. Tell me down below, because I would like to know. We've got loads of new Harry Potter things coming out, you guys. We really do. We have a the brand new Macedonian translation just came out. Yes, there are now two translations from two different publishers. So how cool is that? And I'm so excited that I don't have to search high and low to find this Macedonian like I had to do with the first. And then I didn't even find my translation or my copy of the first Macedonian. A friend of mine, Melanie, the, the Harry Potter collection got it for me. It's such a, it's such a hard book to find. Like it really is really hard to find so i was super thrilled to get to just order one from the publisher it'll arrive very easy loungefly has come up with some wonderful new things And if you have some earbuds that you just want a Harry Potter case for, we have this really cool case from Gizmo Puff. And the House Edition Order of the Phoenix books will be coming out really soon as well. So lots of new stuff coming up. I will try and tell you what all is coming out really soon because I too want to know so I can budget accordingly. And I want to make sure that you guys are staying super well and super safe. And remember, we're all in this together. If you need somebody to talk to during this scary quarantine time, you're certainly welcome to reach out to me. I don't mind, that's what I'm here for. I'm giving away a Lego night bus kit to one of you lucky guys. That giveaway ends, um, what month are we in? May 1st. I will put that information down below. So good luck there. Signed Harry Potter items are really, really fun to collect, but make sure if you want to collect them that you do your research as there are a lot of forgeries in the marketplace. So check out jkrollingforgeries.org for more information there. Or you can check out my website too, 
And if you have any questions about collecting Harry Potter, don't hesitate to ask me. I look forward to talking to you real soon. Please help me reach 2,000 subs. I would really like to do that. So please help me do that. I can't do it without your help. Please send your Harry Potter friends my way. I would be much, much, much obliged. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. With that, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Super happy collecting and good night.